Hey everyone, Ivan Blasquez here. I'm going to go ahead and do this whiteboard presentation here on whether having a metabolism, a high metabolism, is good or bad. So first off, I'm going to, my first point is a slow metabolism is linked to longevity. There's actually studies to, to, to support this. This is Dr. Furman's uh, uh, view. And uh, if you look at the bottom of this video, you can see, you'll see those studies to support all these, uh, most of these points, okay? Um, I actually happen to uh, agree with that. I think it's uh, C. elegans. It's like some sort, I think it's like a, um, some sort of like a, um, a round worm or something like that. They've shown that caloric restriction and having a slower metabolism being linked to longevity. And also, uh, there was a study that Dr. Furman showed that having a higher metabolism was linked to increased mortality, okay? Now, before you, you know, because that, I know that's probably contrary to what you believe. I still think having higher metabolism can be healthy, but it depends on the kind of higher metabolism we have, which I will go ahead and I will discuss right now. Central versus peripheral, this is me discussing it. Central metabolism has to do with resting heart rate, uh, respiratory rate, your central nervous system, okay? Organs, that kind of thing. Then you have peripheral metabolism, which has to do with muscles, muscle tissue mainly, okay? so. One thing that takes me to this next point is our fitness level. We boost our fitness level when we become fitter by exercise, okay? So an example of this is our fitness level, when we boost it, it reduces our resting heart rate, reduces blood pressure, reduces our exercise heart rate as well. So if you take someone who's sedentary and their resting heart rate's 80 beats per minute, and you multiply that by 60 minutes, how many beats? It's 4,800 beats per hour, okay? Now, let's say that same person becomes fitter. Now it's 60 beats a minute. So they drop the resting heart from 80 to 60. Multiply by 60, you get 3,600 beats per minute. That's 1,200 beats an uh, hour, I'm sorry. 3,600 beats per hour. That's 1,200 beats less per hour. So now they're, it's kind of like they're saving beats, okay? It's kind of a conservation. So in a sense, when you become fitter, you actually slow your metabolism, centrally speaking. But you actually boost it peripherally, and there's there's various ways that it's boosted peripherally. First, I think there's a substrate shift. I think that the body becomes very good at switching fuel sources. This is also known as metabolic flexibility. In a, nut, in a nutshell, your muscles will start to burn more fat for energy at rest, okay? That's how a person starts to get lean. So instead of thinking, I need to have a high metabolism to burn a lot of calories, right? Like the higher your metabolism, the more calories you burn. It's more about where those calories are coming from. So it's more about the quality of the calories, not the quantity. Okay, so in other words, when you become fitter, your body burns more fat for energy. And this has been shown to be the case. Uh, there's a shift in our respiratory exchange ratio. And also, we also improve our ability to burn carbohydrates as well. So um, it's just all in all a good, a good scenario. So the final point is absolute versus relative metabolism. So absolute, this is a perfect example. You take somebody's body weight, you multiply it by 10, that's an estimate of your resting metabolism. So let's say, for me, for instance, me, I weigh about 152 to 154 pounds. Let's say 152. That's 1,520 calories per day. That's my resting metabolic rate. Now you take someone who's 600 calories, a morbidly obese individual. That is 6,000 calories a day. So I'm burning 1,520 calories a day, and they're burning 6,000 calories a day. You see the difference between absolute and relative? Absolute metabolism, they have a high metabolism. This person has a very high metabolism, okay? And that's not healthy because th there's more tissue for them to have to, you know, it's more, more demand. Uh, and a lot of that tissue happens to be body fat, which is another factor that can influence metabolism. Having more muscle will increase your metabolism, relatively speaking, not absolute. So, and by the way, I, I, I've done the in-body test and it got me at about 1,700. Uh, my rest of metabolism was about 1,700, which is about 200 calories higher than what you would estimate by multiplying by 10. That's saying something. So relatively, I have a high metabolism, but absolute, in absolute terms, it's, a, it's actually a, a, a slow metabolism, okay? We're not talking slow, like slow as in like, you know, hypothyroid kind of metabolism. We're talking just slow in a sense of, you know, kind of this health benefit, if you will, if you can wrap your head around that. So anyway, um, let me go ahead and finish up the video, guys. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and give a conclusion. All right, you guys, so when I talk about peripheral metabolism, boosting our peripheral metabolism, our muscles, or the metabolism of our muscles, it has to do, I call this the, the, the candle wax example. So every time we work out, 
Okay, so think of the wick of a candle as the carbohydrates and the candle wax as the fat. Okay, the longer the wick, the more carbohydrates we have. Well, every time we work out, if you work out at an ample intensity, and this is based on the carbohydrate intensity continuum, there's a relationship between intensity of exercise and fuel usage. Higher intensity exercise requires more carbohydrate usage, okay? Now, I know initially that may be, be a little like frustrating because you're thinking you want to burn fat when you exercise, you will. There's Again, there's a lot of variety here. I believe in doing fasting and fed training. I think it's good to kind of, you know, switch it up. But when we work out at ample intensity to boost our fitness level, okay, which lowers our central metabolism, our body becomes good at using carbohydrates during the workouts. And so what happens is our body prioritizes carbohydrates. And what I mean is it prioritizes carbohydrates to be used mainly for workouts because your body adapts to that kind of lifestyle. So then your body turns to fat when you're not working out because it's – because you're, you're basically devaluing the body fat on your body by using more carbohydrates and prioritizing it during workouts. So workouts serve two reasons. Number one, they change your, your, your fuel, they, they create a shift in fuel usage, so you burn more fat at rest. Number two, every time we work out, we actually shorten the wick. So think of it this way, you had a long wick, right? Here's the wax, here's the top of the wick. If the flame's up here, the, the, the wax is not even getting touched. If you burn through half of that wick, not all of it, half of it, Guess what? The flame is burning. It's not melting the wax fast, but I guarantee you that top layer of, of wax of the candle is starting to melt. And obviously, as you get it lower, then you're going to you know, burn through the, the wax. But that's the point of the benefit of, um, of exercise and how it improves our metabolism. Okay? It changes the way our body uses calories at rest and during exercise. And just overall, it improves it. So... Um, all right, you guys, so I'm going to go ahead and end this video with this really cool little point here that I got from this article. It says, myth number one, skinnier individuals have a higher metabolism. So I'm quoting from the article. Some thinner folks appear to eat whatever they want with seemingly no consequence. Surely they have a faster metabolism than the average Joe, right? Not so fast. Metabolism actually has quite a bit to do with body size, but not in the way many think. According to Dr. Yoni Friedhoff, assistant professor at the University of Ottawa, Skinny indiv individuals almost invariably have slow resting metabolisms. There's literally less of them to burn while at rest. As a result, larger individuals usually have a higher metabolism. That is, they burn more calories at rest than their thinner counterparts. So in a nutshell, guys, in closing here, um, it's okay to say that we have a higher metabolism. But again, relatively, we probably do. But in absolute terms, we probably don't. And that's okay. Because again, it's important to differentiate absolute versus relative as well as peripheral versus central. Remember, we want to have a slower central metabolism. We want to have, again, now central metabolism will increase during exercise, but that's the training adaptation that occurs. You increase it during exercise, and then it becomes more efficient when we're not exercising, so it operates slower, okay? So it reduces resting heart rate, reduces blood pressure, all those things. Peripheral metabolism, you can do that, again, I'm a big fan of concurrent training. I think doing strength training as well as aerobic training, you get the best of both worlds. And you're going to, um, you know, you're going to impact your muscle. And uh, there's studies, I've, I've done videos on how fitness level can boost resting metabolic rate, okay? And again, the boost is not great in terms of absolute terms, but if it's a couple hundred calories above what your estimate is, so let's say you weigh 160 pounds and your resting metabolic rate is like 1,800, okay, it's only 200 calories up absolute terms, it's, it, it's, it's a lower metabolism, but relatively speaking, it's high for you. So, uh, and, and you're going to be burning more fat that way. So there's a science to this all. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and stop the video here, guys. Uh, give this video a thumbs up. Thank you for watching and tune in next time.